Hi guys! In today's video we're going to be looking at some set expressions that a lot of native English speakers use in their daily life. Those expressions, not like idioms, they're slightly different, they don't have any other kind of meaning, but they're very natural, they make daily communication nice and flowing and really going to help you bring your English level to a higher one. Okay, my name is Anastasia, this is English with Lingo Trip, and let's get started. Everything's in English. All you need to know. All right, how did you learn to speak English? And our first expression today is better late than never. Imagine you're late for a meeting and you arrive at your office uh, obviously late and you say oh I'm sorry I'm late I got stuck in traffic and then your colleague or your boss can say it's all right better late than never this phrase can be actually just light you know if you don't want your friend or somebody else to feel stressed about being late you say okay better late than never or it can be quite sarcastic you know if somebody brings they promise to do something and they do it so much later and you can say, yeah, better late than never, but you're still quite unhappy. So be careful with your intonation when you say it. Better late than never. The next phrase is, you can say that again. It means that you agree with somebody who just said something. For example, your friend is saying, I think the party was awesome. I say, you can say that again. It's like, yeah, it was awesome. You can say that again. The next phrase is, well, I never. It means you are quite shocked, you know, if you've heard some news or some new information and you want to express that. For example, she really agreed to marry him. Well, I never. This does not mean that you would marry that person. It just means that, oh, I wouldn't believe it. Like that. Well, I never. Well, I never. The next phrase is used when are uh, you fail at something or something didn't quite go as successfully as you hoped for. The phrase goes, you can't win them all. Yeah, if you didn't achieve something, then you say, well, there is nothing to worry about. You can't win them all. It means you can't be succeeding at everything, everything. It's okay not to succeed at something. Can you win them all? The next expression is quite commonly used and it goes, at the end of the day, you add it at the start of a sentence when you want to, for example, summarize some kind of argument or you're not sure about something, you're trying to make a decision. So you think, oh, these are the pros, these are the cons. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. For example, we talked about the situation and I advised him what I thought he should do. But at the end of the day, it's his decision. At the end of the day. Another great expression is, let's face it, meaning let's look at the situation honestly, without any exaggerations or without covering any ugly truth, for example. So let's face it, let's see the situation for what it is. For example, this program doesn't work, let's face it. They can be used in a situation when, for example, you're trying a new fitness program and it's not working. So you need to accept it say, well, let's face it. Let's face it. If your friend is sad, for example, or you would like to do something nice to them, make them smile, you can say, cheer up. It's a very simple expression, but used in an appropriate situation, it can do something really nice. Cheer up if you're sad. Cheer up. This next expression can be used as well to cheer somebody up, but be careful with that though. So the expression is, it's not the end of the world, meaning um, life still goes on, even though something unpleasant happened now, life still goes on and you can move on. But be careful with that expression. If something serious happened to a friend of yours, you don't want to make them feel like it wasn't important, right? Make sure that it's not about a big problem. You know, ah, I lost my job, I don't have any money. It's not the end of the world. No, don't say that because to somebody it can be really important. But for example, if it's something more routine, if your friend is a student and they didn't pass their exam, uh, you can say, well, it's not the end of the world because you can reset it. Yeah, again, just be sensitive. Not the end of the world. By the way, if you want to get rid of 
annoying mistakes you make in English in just a few minutes per day, I highly recommend that you download our ebook Minus 365 Mistakes Per Year. This ebook is designed for easy learning. You can dedicate three to five minutes to it every day, and if you think that it's not that much, well, in a year it amounts to 30 hours, which is almost like a full English course. After doing this, you're gonna have a lot of your mistakes in your speech. You will not find such a training resource anywhere else. Be sure we know how to help you develop the habit of practicing the language every day and enjoy it. The link will be down below. The next expression is rather you than me. It means that you're happy not to be in the place of uh, your friend or the person you're talking to. For example, your friend is telling you after the party, I have to clear up all the mess after this party. And you say, hmm, rather you than me, bye. Don't do that if you're a good friend. Help your friends. Yeah, rather you than me. All right, so the next expression is great minds think alike. We can use it when, for example, you're saying something to a friend of yours or your colleague or somebody else, and they're like, oh, I had exactly the same thought. And you can say, great minds think alike. Sometimes, you know, if you're messaging and somebody says something, you know, in a message, and you say, oh, I was thinking exactly the same. And then you can shorten the phrase by just saying, great minds, which means great minds think alike. Or for example, you're at work and your colleague says, let's take a lunch break. I says, ooh, I was thinking exactly the same. Great minds think alike, especially when it comes down to food. Great minds think alike. And our next expression is, you win some, you lose some. Again, if um, you are, um, well, I don't like the word fail because it's quite heavy, but if you did not succeed at something, you kind of accept it and you say, well, you win some, you lose some. For example, we had to shut down the business this week, but in this industry, you win some, you lose some. So somewhere you win, somewhere you lose, all in all, you can't always win. You win some, you lose some. The next phrase is, no news is good news. What it means is that sometimes, especially now, you know, we, we are obsessed with information. You know, we need confirmation, we need signals, we are waiting for messages, updates and stuff like that. So sometimes when you're not receiving anything, it's actually good. You know, it's good news. It means nothing bad happened. No news is good news. Or you can use it with friends sometimes. If you bump into a friend, say, hey, hi, how are you? And your friend says, oh, fine, nothing special really. And you say, cool, no news is good news. Well, no news is good news. The next expression is better safe than sorry. It's usually used when we're talking about some safety measures and um, you may hear it from mothers, for example, when they say, oh, do this, do this, do this. And you're like, oh, mom, I'm okay. But she says, better safe than sorry, meaning it's better to take some safety measures beforehand than uh, facing consequences when the problem actually happens. For example, I think you should drive more slowly on this icy road. Better safe than sorry. Yeah, that's right, better safe than sorry. The next expression, you live and learn. You can use it when, for example, you find out something new about a thing that you've been using for a long time. For example, you've had your phone for a long time and then you discover a very convenient application or function. So you say, hmm, I didn't know my phone had this function. You live and learn. It's like you find something new all the time, even though you thought you knew everything. Live and learn. The next expression has a different, well, there are different versions of the origin of this expression. It is, this too shall pass. One of the versions of the origin of this phrase is that a king asked craftsmen to make a ring for him so that when he's sad, he could look at the ring and feel happy. So this line, this too shall pass, just says that everything is temporary. Good things pass and bad things pass. So, and this, if you are finding yourself in a difficult situation, this too shall pass. It will be over. This too shall pass. And the last expression for today is 
from time immemorial. Well, it sounds a little bit, you know, formal, but it's actually not. You can use it in your everyday life. It means, so time immemorial actually refers to some time in the past that happened so long ago that people can't remember it. So you don't have memories of what happened, but it happened a long time ago. You can say, my family has lived in this area from time immemorial, since a very, very long time ago. From time immemorial. So this is it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel to make sure you don't miss any other useful videos. Stay tuned and I'll see you next time.